Hello everyone, today I'm going to be taking a look at the latest box set for Moonstone from Goblin King Games, the Malachite Mystics for the Lachevolt. Okay, so taking a look then at the new Malachite Mystic box uh, for Moonstone. You can see you get three figures, Klaus, Regan and Gwendolyn, Gwendoline, um, for the Lachevolt. I do like that word, Lachevolt. Opening the box up, we have cards and bases. I should get to those momentarily. And we also have three figures. Okay, so starting with Gwendolyn. She is one of the Fae with those beautiful butterfly wings and a whole head full of flowers. Blending in with the tree there. Really crisp detail. Very nicely defined uh, sharp edges. So if you're not a painter, you can get away with a wash, maybe even just a, a pin wash into the recesses there just to make them stand out. And if you are a painter, then Go nuts, you've got plenty of room, acres of space. All those individual sculpted flowers. That's remarkable. Nice clean cast. Slight bit of clean up to do on the wingtips. On the bottom of these wingtips as well. Very minor. We also have the arm here and then a little loincloth for the front. You can see the uh, lug, the locking lug for the arm in there. That's a very delicate piece. I will say with these, because the resin, um, if you're worried about getting them off the gates, heat the resin up, drop it into a water bath, warm water, just out of the tap is warm enough, give it a couple of minutes and this will go rubbery, allowing you to slice this away without worrying about accidentally shearing any parts off. So Gwendolyn, we'll have a look at the next, uh, I suppose, it's a fawn, uh, which is Regan. So you have this remarkable looking cloak with these almost angular curls on them. Reminds me a lot of the, uh, the sort of Tim Burton or... Um, a lot of the styling that was done by uh, Terry uh, for Rackham miniatures. They used to have all of these very angular spirals on things. I really like it a lot. It's, um, it's very distinctive. Great big pair of ears on. And we can see here the feet, which we'll just tuck in there, giving a sort of floating swammy pose. There's a lovely little carved rock with the Lachevolt skull on it, and then a snake, presumably, in the hands there. And if it's not a snake, then it's some sort of unusual spiral wand type thing, or giant corkscrew for a bottle of wine. So that's Regan. And finally we have Klaus, the big fat fawn, covered in bells, bell around his neck, bells around his waist, bells on his ankles, doesn't have toes so no bells there, but he does have a massive honking cowbell as a flail, it says B on it, don't know who B is, time will tell. So. Flea, I think, sits something like that on the back. And again, incredibly crisp casting. Really, really nice detail. It runs the, the very fine line of, uh, I suppose, subtle detail. There, there's enough on there without being overly fussy. Uh, but at the same time, it's not so minimalist that you've just got nothing to work with. 
So whether you're a painter or just a gamer, these are terrific sculpts. So let's go and get them all built. So the Malachite Mystics are all built. They went together very easily. No major issues or massive cleanup required. Um, it was just really a quick scrape down and a, uh, and a drop of glue and away you go. Um, in cleaning up, you might be able to notice just there, a tiny air bubble has been um, uncovered. I can fill that in with a bit of putty or I'm going to leave that because it's so small. Chances are the primer will cover it anyway. But there's Klaus rocking all his bells. And we'll have a quick look at Klaus's card. So, Lachevult. He has no arcane and no evade, so he's not going to be avoiding the uh, incoming ranged attacks so much. But he does have a melee of three and a two inch range for that massive cowbell as he goes winging it around him. Uh, he has some interesting things. So, his flail uh, is all about the impact. He also has egged on. Uh, so character gains plus one melee for each other friendly cultist within six inches. So that's where the keyword comes in. When you're building your trip, try to stack it with cultists. Protected Regan Lachevelt Princess, or Priestess rather. If the friendly named character is in play, then this character gains protection the first time it would suffer damage each turn, reduce that damage to nout. He also has Tub Thumping. For all you Chumba Wumba fans, he gets knocked down, he gets up again. Once per turn, if he's reduced to zero wounds, you flip a card um, from the Arcane deck and it will either be a number or a catastrophe. If it's a number, he stands back up with that many wounds. If it's a catastrophe, he is dead. Only works once per turn, so if somebody wants to finish him off, they need to do him early and then keep a second character to polish him off if he gets up again. He also has a Hold My Beer move. Um, which is quite nice. Three energy and all stacked towards the end. So he's going to be very effective when he's down low. So if he dies and comes back, he's still going to be as effective as he was. So he really needs to be put down for good. And his signature move is flail around madly. So it's the upgrade, the sweeping cut. Um, in the end step, the character suffers one impact damage. This does not count as melee damage, but it will... Uh, Give him some bonuses beyond the standard uh, sweeping cut. So, shall we take a look at the Priestess then? Since he protects. So, Regan. I haven't put the little stone on the base. Because um, I don't know if I'm going to keep these bases or I have some nice cobblestone bases that they may go on. So, it's just to one side for the time being. I have decided that this is indeed a danger noodle, so a little snake. But the build was simplicity itself. It was really just arms and legs on. Um, and the arms fit in just perfectly. It was just clip it off the sprue and pop it straight in and it's there, done and dusted. Really nice model. Really uh, mystical, I suppose, that floating zen-like pose. Little fond legs. Clean up was minimal as well. So, our priestess. Again, a cultist, so that obviously has the synergy with Klaus. Um, Malay's fairly standard, I was going to say mediocre. Arcane, on the other hand, through the roof. Um, so, expel whenever a character suffers a catastrophe. After resolving it, draw an arcane card, look at it, and place it face down beside this character. At any point, you can add the remove card to your arcane or arcane resist. Um, and then if you do, they get shuffled back in. So you have the ability to store a card, which is very good because you may potentially want um, to harbor them for either bluffing for arcane resists or to make sure that something goes through. And by having it out of the deck means you know that you've always got that one on hand and your opponent does as well. So in the bluff and counter bluff part of the game, uh, it becomes very, very powerful. Verdant Growth. So one of the abilities, place a 50 mil marker within four X inches. This remains in place until the end of the game. 
uh, catastrophe, you'll suffer wounds, and then the Malachite ritual. So, target within two inches of a tree or wooded patch gains X energy, target non spirit heals, and uh, target suffers X wounds. So, obviously, with the verdant growth, if there aren't a huge amount of shrubberies on your uh, your tabletop or if they're too far away you can move it more into play so suddenly sprouting a verdant patch in the middle of a, a town is probably very handy uh, if you want to be able to use your your um, malachite ritual on your opponent signature move on a lugard we'll look at that in a moment three energy um, fairly spread out so as soon as you start taking wounds it will start impacting but should still be fairly good up until the better, better end. And mist form is the low guard. So range damage suffered, or just range damage suffered by minus two. So that's excellent. And then in melee, uh, you're not going to be dealing any damage at all. So when you see them coming for you, you can turn into a, a mist and float off into the forest. So that's Reagan. And last, but by no means least, we have Gwendolyn, another priestess. So this model had the little loincloth on the front, very easy to put on the hand. I put a drop of glue onto the shoulder and then just gently ease the hand into place um, with the end of a toothpick, actually. But you have that massive flourish of flowers. Like I say, could be the tree or it could be her hair, or a blend of two. It's difficult to say where the, the tree stops and the fae begins, but a, a very delicate figure, beautifully sculpted and beautifully cast. So, yeah, I absolutely adore this. Another interesting little feature. And this may not be much to most people. The tree roots all stay perfectly within that lip. And again, when you see models like this and these um, round shouldered bases where they have the inset sometimes the sculptor will sculpt things separately from the base and then when you come to put it on you'll find that limbs will cross over or it won't sit flat or it's too large so obviously some thought has gone into the basing for the game as well and it's a little touch but it means a lot to me because i hate having to go back and clip or change or modify bases to get miniatures onto them so looking at her card Again, a fairy cultist. She has, however, both the Lashevult and the Dominion symbol, so she can be used in trips for either of those. Fairy cultist, uh, Malie's not going to be what you're bringing her for, really. Uh, the Arcane is, so Arcane 5, a lot of cards. Feeble, reduces all incoming, or reduces all Malie damage the character deals by minus two. Harvest actions cost this model plus one energy. So she shouldn't be running about picking stuff up. Scry, draw the top card of the arcane deck, look at it, and then place it face down beside your character card. And at any point you can add it to your arcane or resist hand. Uh, if you do so, then at the end of the action, if this character is slain, you shuffle it back into your deck. So like Reagan, it's all about card control, which is very important. So if you've got the pair of these on the table, then you know that you've got two cards under your control, um, which will make your opponent very nervous, especially if they attempt to bluff. Rejuvenate, so eight inch range. Target model restores X plus one wounds and then moves. Uh, ethereal allure, you can move a target X plus two inches directly towards this character. So bringing them into range for somebody else to hit them. Uh, catastrophe for both is two wounds. Signature move on a high guard and the least of all health. So we've only got the six health, but in that there's five energy on the go. So very powerful character, like a lot of the Fae. The upgrade for high guard is Dream Glade Glamour. So at the end step effect, the target or the enemy cannot make a melee attack targeting this character until the end of the turn. So it really locks people down. So that's excellent. A really interesting bunch and a fantastic set of figures. I think a lot of people will be keen on these for their games. We're feeling that just for painting up. Uh, the Malachite Mystics are a 
tremendous trio. So there we are, a tremendous trio for your games of uh, Moonstone. Obviously, mostly Lashavolt, although you could throw Gwendolyn into your uh, Dominion as well. So a compressed set of fairies, and I think some really fun rules again, really leaning into the, the dark fairy tale nature of Moonstone. Uh, let me know if this is one you're planning on picking up yourself or if maybe Moonstone is new to you then keep your eyes peeled we will be having a couple of let's plays coming out in the next few weeks. Take care, bye bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and while you're at it why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on you know you want to click it, go on.